showcase the National Library of Medicine's efforts to support seven awardees as they use new technology to raise awareness and disseminate HIV and AIDS information. There is roughly a million people living with HIV in the U.S., and one in seven of them don't even know it. This video reel will capture the innovative process each awardee took to spread awareness about HIV through prevention and treatment. We will show you how each awardee organization created and executed their NLM project and how we use to connect with their target group to increase HIV information. So let's start with the awardees in the Big Apple, New York City. threw up his arms to the ceiling, uh, looked up and said, there is no cure for AIDS and there never will be. He said, I can't take handling so many young people dying. He said, I just cannot take it. In 1994, at the height of the AIDS epidemic, Paz Magazine, founded in New York City, was first published. Paz stands for being HIV positive. It was also a time where there was a, a lot of death and a lot of suffering. So it was a very bad environment to be tested positive. Oreo Gutierrez was diagnosed with HIV in the 90s and has been an avid reader of the magazine since its inception. For years, this magazine has been a resource for him to learn how to survive with the virus. I didn't think that I would see the age of 30. He is 47 and now is the editor-in-chief of PAUSE. The nationwide magazine reaches over 125,000 people with each issue and has an online version, PAUSE.com, which gets more than 5 million page views a month. PAUSE covers a wide spectrum of needs of people living with and affected by HIV and AIDS. But when it comes to online, there's also a portion of people that we still want to engage with, with better. Um, that's certainly uh, people that are more tech savvy, uh, younger people, um, people that are at risk for HIV who are not necessarily living with the virus but need more information. HIV and AIDS information from the National Library of Medicine was a resource that brought PAUSE and Da Vinci Interactive, a nationally recognized educational technology leader, together. Da Vinci Interactive saw PAUSE's strong network and suggested interactive learning to complement PAUSE's online HIV news. Interactive learning uh, takes a topic that is usually text-based and puts it into a graphical uh, multimedia format. It grabs the user's attention, it makes them become involved and make key decisions really uh, in the learning process. Mesa Scuderi is Chief Operating Officer for Da Vinci. With content from NLM and PAUSE, his team was able to create interactive modules and characters at the forefront of each story. So we start with the content that's there. We pair that up with visual concepts early on to see, uh, to make sure that both are consistent. And we bring them together using uh, interactive animation, sound, um, and just the flow through the learning module itself and getting the user involved in making key decisions along the way. The information from AIDS Source and AIDS Info was vital in creating each module and its associated topic. Like the aging module, which Gutierrez says has been especially helpful for him. From the aging module, I think what I've taken away from it uh, the best is the idea of self-empowerment, the idea of seeing people like myself who are, who are living long-term with the virus and how they've gotten through the last uh, several decades, um, you know, feeling that they can talk to their doctor, feeling that they have information enough to, to make treatment decisions. A partnership that connects information and technology together to help more people hear and see how to live with HIV. When you think of comic books or graphic novels, what immediately comes to mind? Batman, Superman? Well, for digital illustrator Mike Leary, he sees a tool to improve somebody's life. I am the illustrator for this project, and I also wrote the scripts for this project, which is an HIV prevention campaign uh, geared to the Latino community. The campaign is called Amigos y Amantes, and it's being spearheaded by El Centro, a nonprofit organization that seeks to use interactive graphic novels 
The novels raise awareness of HIV and AIDS for Latino MSM in New York City. Latinos represent just 17% of the population, but when it comes to the new cases of HIV, they represent almost 25% of the cases in the country. The entire process starts with focus groups held with community members. On the initial focus groups, where it was really about message development. We said these are the, the key HIV prevention messages. This is material that's posted at the National Library of Medicine website. Here's a broad picture of what we're thinking we're going to do. It's going to be an online comic book with voices and speech bubbles, and sometimes there might be choice points where the action will stop and you'll decide for a character whether they should or shouldn't do something. Viable input from community members coupled with the National Library of Medicine's resources kickstart the script writing and character development process with a focus on culturally relatable content. They also need information that is appropriate for them, that comes from their experiences, where the characters actually look like them, right? that they feel identified with those characters. A task that was near and dear to the heart of illustrator Mike Leary. Having uh, several Latino friends and also living in a Latino community of uh, Inwood in Manhattan. It was very special to me. Once the art was finished, content development began. A key focus was to seamlessly integrate NLM health education into the story. What we came up with is what we call sort of a circle of friends structure. So there's one main character and then these spokes that come out from him. So we know that he's questioning, he's in the city, he's having sex with men and with women, but he's also got a friend who's openly out and he's got a cousin who's having problems in her relationship. Harnessing the power of compelling stories to inspire readers to feel and think deeply about health issues that directly affect them. Nestled between Philadelphia and Pittsburgh sits the capital city of Pennsylvania, Harrisburg. Beyond having the unique distinction as the training center for the Union Army during the Civil War and the present location of the National Civil War Museum, Harrisburg now serves as home to a new organization fighting a new battle, Black Girl Health. Black Girl Health is a digital publishing company. Our mission is to transform everyday minority women into healthier individuals. We focus our efforts on social media, online commercials, and community outreach. In 2015, Black Girl Health saw great success on Facebook, using articles and creating a newscast to disseminate NLM information and resources as part of the Pop the Question HIV awareness campaign. Pop the Question is really just women taking control of their sexual health. When you think of Pop the Question, you probably think of a man getting down on one knee and asking their partner to marry them. Instead, this is the woman, maybe not getting down on her knee, but asking that man to go get tested. Using HIV information from AIDS Source and Medline Plus, BGH expanded their Pop the Question campaign in 2016 to another social media network frequently used by the target audience, Instagram. Social media assistant Ashley Manning converted text-based NLM articles to short format videos, then published those videos weekly on the BGH Instagram page for its followers. HIV is definitely a sensitive topic. It's something that a lot of people don't feel comfortable talking about. There's definitely a huge stigma around HIV in the minority community. So bringing this information to them on social media through video, it makes them feel more comfortable sharing it and talking about it with others. To help in the fight to raise awareness, BGH recruited help from social media influencer, Miss J. DMV. So how many women has he been with? Oh, Heather, Marie, and Tom. Oh, that's not bad, three and Brittany, and Tanya's sister, and uh, Mackenzie. Ladies, are you unsure about your man's HIV status? If so, it might be time to pop the question. Visit blackgirlhealth.com today, and we'll show you how. Bringing comedy to a topic that isn't fun to talk about really made the content more engaging. Capitalizing on the viral reach of the video, Ms. J instructed her following to navigate to the BGH website where they could fill out a survey evaluating their knowledge of HIV and how to pop the question. It opened up an avenue for us to have a dialogue about how to pop the question, when to pop the question, and if you have popped the question correctly. 
BGH's staff assistant, Carlise Kirtan, played an integral role in turning our digital interactions with minority women into real-world actions at Black Girl Health's second annual Kickstart Health and Wellness Expo. As a part of our Pop the Question campaign, we're here at the Kickstart Women's Health Expo, and we're offering women an option to get screened for HIV. The increased awareness of NLM's HIV information on social media encouraged women to not only attend the expo, but garnered several on-site testings as well, showing once and for all in the battle for minority women's health in Harrisburg, allies prove more powerful than obstacles. HIV is a tide. The Tidewater region has not been able to turn. Norfolk State University is helping lead the community out of the rocky waters with Project Choice. Project Choice is an HIV education and prevention program. So the choice stands for choosing healthy options in challenging environments. The university program has focused on meeting the health needs of African Americans by using technology to access information. I think um, the mission of this project is really in line with the overall mission of Project Choice, which is to not only educate um, students and community members that we engage with, but to try to prevent the spread of HIV. To disseminate information from the National Library of Medicine, engineer student Katora Codwell created an iBook. You're able to put the iBook together through, um, of course, the software iBooks offer. Codwell says multiple widgets are in the software, which provide the ability to include interactive media, such as audio and video, that the reader can play, some of which are recorded skits from theater students You're at not Norfolk afraid State. You're timid when you speak. But what would we say to our partners exactly? Like, with my intuition, I can't help but feel as though all men are up to no good and are never trying to actually listen to what you're doing and what you're saying. So I took the role as being this ideal, aggressive woman who had been sexually harassed, violated, you name it. Protect yourself. Don't neglect yourself. AIDS Info and Medline Plus were the resources used to bring context to the scripts. She became informed with the prep, the information of HIV, how to go get help and who to talk to, where to go, so on and so forth. And her character changed. So embedded in the iBook are questions that they ask, and then it gives you the right answer to tell you whether you're right or wrong. So that's embedded in several of the chapters to make sure that people are understanding what they're reading. Project Choice realizes the real test is outside the boundaries of campus life and in the community. Cynthia Burwell is tasked with taking the iBook to the churches. The church helps to reach the people. They will be trained on how to use the iBook. Uh, for H AIDS and HIV uh, education in their churches. They will be able to use it with different groups in their churches um, to provide up-to-date information. NLM information that's helping give an innovative lifeline to protect the Tidewater community. innovative projects on the East Coast are fighting the HIV epidemic with NLM educational tools, community outreach organizations, colleges, tech and digital companies, print and online publications are all playing an integral role in making a difference. So now we're going to visit organizations and communities further west, starting in the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, where there's an increase of HIV AIDS related cases among African American men. At the close of 2015, more than 24,000 people were living with HIV in Chicago, Illinois. Proactive, a local nonprofit organization, 
is on the front lines, training and equipping community health workers on how to deal with the HIV epidemic. There are actually four institutions involved, two community-based institutions and two academic institutions. One is South Suburban College, and that's out here, and that's a two-year institution. And the other is um, Chicago State University. These step-up students will eventually become community health workers, helping residents by educating them on HIV prevention and treatment methods through the use of tablets. I know that in the future, with the career choice that I've chosen, this is going to be a great tool for me because the information that I share will be from a reliable source. Proactive will train 93 step-up students on NLM resources. This will be part of an interactive digital lesson plan and Proactive's healthcare readiness program. I thought that I had the resources that I needed to talk about HIV, but as I began to go on this particular website, I learned more and more, and it was more truthful and accurate information. The tablets community health workers learn to navigate NLM resources on will prove useful at off-site partner organizations, allowing them the opportunity to meet people where they are with vital and accurate HIV prevention and treatment information. We have high-risk populations, so they are hard to find, hard to locate. But our team has really been able to go in there and do segmented outreach and locate those individuals that are positive. Increasing numbers of qualified healthcare workers to meet the increasing need to treat HIV patients. On any given day, one to 200 people pass through the Mexican consulate in Salt Lake City, Utah, and a good portion of those people are just waiting. And there's absolutely nothing there to do. They just sit there and stare at the wall, pretty much. So we use that time with a promotora or a community health worker. And they take full advantage of it, transforming waiting time into a meaningful health learning experience. The biggest way that HIV has affected our community members is the fact that it's not something that we talk about, and it's not something that we necessarily know about. Getting pertinent health information from a familiar face also makes a big impact on those served. Cuando damos la información, por ejemplo, de Medilan Plus, ayuda, por ejemplo, muchas personas no tienen un seguro médico y se fijan en la página, y eso les ayuda a, a investigar, y pues así les ayuda bastante en los medicamentos que hay veces no sabemos los nombres raros, entonces ellos se fijan a través de, de Maryland Plus. Information they may have never come across due to the language barriers they face in the U.S. and cultural barriers they face back home. We invite them into the Ventanilla de Salud to get tested. We do blood pressure, glucose, and BMI testing. And at the end of every person coming in to getting the testing, we do a one-on-one -on -one session to go over the websites again, to reinforce that these websites are available to them, to get HIV AIDS info, but also other health-related information. They've connected over 300 people to health resources with the help of the National Library of Medicine, including Syria Alvarez. There is one website in particular that um, Alejandra showed me where you can find like HIV testing places by like putting in your zip code um, and it's really cool. From those surveys we've been able to realize that the work that our promotoras are doing is valuable and it works because we see an increase of knowledge from the before and after of our community members when they receive the workshop and are able to access the resources. Assisting yet another person to their right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of healthiness. the transgender tipping point. From the red carpet and the runway to politics and entertainment, transgender people truly were everywhere. But for many transgender youth, the notoriety has not created impactful change in their daily lives. Nowhere is that more apparent than in the area of healthcare. 
transgender youth, uh, they have uh, challenges, they have uh, requirements, and they don't know where to go to get their questions answered. They don't know where to go to get services that are youth friendly with providers that understand the needs that are quite unique for the transgender community. Headquartered in the Bay Area of California, the Mecca of LGBTQ rights, YTH is the partner of choice for those in search of new ways to advance health of youth and young adults through technology. In addition to those health disparities, youth are also kind of faced with they're dependent on their parents. They don't necessarily have an income. So if they come out to their parents and they're not receiving support, I mean, where do you go from there? And that is why they developed They2Z, a mobile app that brings together all the Bay Area resources for transgender spectrum youth. Um, so the design itself was really guided by our brainstorming process and meeting with uh, the transgender youth community and our advisory board. So that sort of kicked off the design process where we got feedback from them on what they would like to see in the app. When somebody uses the app and they are searching for a certain uh, answer, a certain uh, search term, uh, a lot of the resources that end up coming up are actually NLM resources. The app is available in the Apple or Android App Store and has features that allow you to find community hangouts, testing sites, and doctors like Dr. Scott Moser, a internationally renowned board certified plastic surgeon based in San Francisco. I think the app is, is expansive for, for trans healthcare resources. So it, it, any individual that's looking for an HIV doctor or again a blood pressure doctor or a or a diabetes doctor for any reason, but wants to make sure that they're gender inclusive and, and, and understanding of their potential gender needs as well, um, those individuals will all be using the app. Giving Bay Area transgender youth their moment for a better life. have just seen the technical processes each ACIOP awardee took to disseminate NLM HIV information. Da Vinci upgraded a conventional print magazine with a scenario-based e-learning module interwoven with resources from NLM. El Centro used interactive graphic novels to disseminate NLM information. Black Girl Health used an influential social media celebrity to bring minority women together to learn about NLM information resources. Norfolk State University developed iBooks that combine dramatic arts with NLM information to engage youth. Proactive Community Services engage students pursuing health careers to use tablets to become proficient with NLM resources. Communities United use the Mexican Consulate as a technology center to educate Spanish-speaking immigrants on NLM resources and HIV information. And lastly, YTH served transgender youth by developing a mobile phone app using NLM information to meet the special needs of this population. After showing all the technical approaches used to disseminate NLM resources, we hope you see the awardees as key stakeholders that align their efforts to address an ongoing health crisis. In addition, the National Library of Medicine as an emerging leader in innovative approaches to raising awareness around HIV and AIDS. We'd like to thank NLM for promoting cutting edge technology to support HIV and AIDS prevention and treatment information, as well as supporting each awardee's creative uses of NLM's resources.